Hi, this is Phil DeBella, and you're listening to Flashcast by PDB. And in the great spirits of what goes around comes around, I get to interview Jana today. So you get to hear me ask her questions. And again, unscripted, quick fire, and uh, you'll get nothing but raw answers, I'm sure. Hopefully you take something strong away from it. So without further ado, introducing the wonderful Jana DeBella. Thanks for being here and um, agreeing to this. Who knows what may come? <laughs> Thanks for having me. So let's fire off. Simple one. We'll set the pace. Tell me the most defining turning moment of your life that first comes to mind. Oh, gosh. That's first thing comes difficult. to mind. Uh, Having uh, being in the hospital and um, and laying my eyes on Annika for the first time, it was a moment of pure happiness, pure love, and it was almost like I was coming home. It was a thing that I was always meant to do. What's been the most difficult thing in your life to date? Again, the first thing that comes to mind. I think that um, a lot of viewers may not know this, but there was a time where the pressure of the business caused a lot of marital issues with us and, uh, you know, navigating that and finding our way back to each other was both difficult at the time, but in reflection was probably one of the defining moments of us as a couple in um, having a family, but also as a as a business couple. So, of course, yeah, as pressures obviously happen and all the rest of it. And one thing I think that's great about you and I is that we always keep it um, honest, real and authentic. It's a value that we both hold dear to our hearts um, and something for people to take away. And obviously communication was the key. So tell me, what um, you think your best strength is? I think my best strength is to listen and, you know, everyone says, oh, you know, to be a great communicator, you need to listen. But to listen with all your five senses is actually a real, a, a real skill that you develop over time. And I think I practice that every day with the coaching, being present, truly present with someone and understanding in a really raw way what they're going through and how they want to be best helped. I think that would be my greatest skill and my greatest strength. So obviously with every strength, there's also weaknesses. Tell me, what would be your biggest weakness? My biggest weakness is my perfectionism. So all my life, I've been really self-critical. And I think that's actually held me back from doing a lot of things and achieving things that I might have achieved earlier in life. But it's taken the emotional and mental maturity of living life that's helped me come to realise how it's fruitless being such a perfectionist. It's pointless, actually. And it's just easier and better just to have a go and get it wrong and learn from that. Otherwise, it isn't learning and we're not growing. So on that, what, you know, listeners that would be listening to this that would suffer the same thing of being perfectionists, um, what would be, say, two or three tips that you would give them that would help them, um, based on your experience, to turn that negativity around of being so self-critical? So I did some coaching with a, a psychologist and oh, I've done psychology, so I know this. And he taught me the ABCD model. And so... Uh, I know this is a, a flashcard, so we don't have time to go into it, but A is the activating event, B is the belief, C is the consequence, and D is the dispute. So anytime I came up with a negative self-limiting uh, thought, I would uh, analyse that thought by going through that ABCD model, and it helped me come to understand my habitual patterns of thinking and what I needed to actually change. And as a result, I think I've been, um, I developed USA, which is um, unconditional self-acceptance. And I work a lot with the clients that I have doing the same thing, because a lot of us do suffer from not being enough and feeling that that is not available to us. So there's just one method that I've used in the past. It's really helped me and it's helped a lot of other people 
really develop and grow and get beyond themselves and what their limiting beliefs are about themselves. There's some really great tips there and obviously there's many ways to do it and everyone has to find their own uh, way through and navigate but that ABCD model might be something that would help listeners because I think um, it's quite prevalent where we all don't believe that we're enough or we lack purpose and and don't understand where we are and and get quite negative on ourselves which can quite often give us a spiral downwards so um, you know we all want to feel at our best and that's normally when we have a very strong purpose um, and belief and belonging in this world. Tell me Jana, if I gave you a blank piece of paper and I said to you that you could be professionally anybody you want, you could do any dream job in the world, what would it be if I said to you, write your own script? I think I'm actually doing that because I really enjoy one-on-one individual coaching with people and I enjoy the one-on-one versus the team, like the bigger one-to-many because I feel one-on-one I can have a profound impact on helping people achieve the thing that they most want to achieve. And so I'm, I'm doing it and I love it. And the thing I love most about it is just empowering people's potential in a way that they never even thought it was possible. Yeah, it's, it's, I've seen some of the work you've done and obviously hear some of the feedback and people love it and your whole thing is about taking what's out of focus and bringing it into focus, which I think is so powerful because uh, you navigate people's mindsets rather than sit there and try and tell them what to do. You help them, you know, navigate what they what's out of focus into focus, which I think is quite a big difference to your traditional everyday coaching that most people embark on. Tell me, what, how would you define your most irritating habit? The thing you love about yourself, you hate about yourself. So uh, the perfectionism that I mentioned earlier has helped me uh, really seek and explore and discover myself and be very self-aware. But at the same time, it's also held me back. So I think having uh, a mature approach to that way of looking at myself has probably tipped it from being a shadow uh, shadow strength, if you will, to uh, a more empowering strength. Tell me, what's the hardest thing about being a mum? Oh my gosh, I'm going through this now because our daughter is 11 and our son is nine. So our daughter is very strong-willed, which absolutely I want a strong-willed daughter. Uh, but she's going through that period where her be all and end all is her friends and she's very self-centered. So, uh, you know, reminding her and encouraging her to see her life through her values and connecting in with that versus her friends and what's popular and uh, what's, you know, exciting in the moment. Um, is something that I do struggle with uh, because I want to be that mum that gets her to think, not that mum that tells her what to do or how to be. And on the flip side of that, we've got a nine-year-old who is a very sensitive soul. So building his resilience and the approach that I take in doing that is always a bit of a challenge because I'm always exploring and uh, moving the Rubik's Cube around to ensure that he has that growth mindset. Yeah, and can I tell you about, you do a great job and um, obviously we, we always say that for us, you know, kids is a journey and that we spend a lot of time with them and talking to them and they spend a lot of time with us, which is um, hopefully, because at the end of it, all we can do is the best that we can and um, hopefully they grow up to be the best versions of themselves, but we want to give them every chance to be able to achieve that. So in closing, tell me, G, what's the one thing that you wish you could change in the world? today? I think I would like to increase everyone's conversational intelligence. And why? Because conversational intelligence is all about, cultures are built on uh, relationships, relationships are built on conversations. So if we can lift the conversational intelligence of individuals in, in work, in homes, we'll be a lot more successful as a community as a whole. 
Wow, what a great answer. It's been an honour. You've been listening to Flashcast by PDB and I've had the pleasure of interviewing Jana DeBella. Until next time, be the best you can be. 